Welcome, my name is Jonas Becklin and uh, I'm going to take you through the first issue of The Educator Prophet. This is a web sign and its intention is to illustrate some of the development in learning theory and uh, teachers open online learning. First there will be an introduction section discussing and basically formulating the foundations for digital identity and network learning. To illustrate this, I've been following uh, Social Media and Open Education, ECNI 831, that has been going on during the fall 2011. It's held by Alec Koros and uh, it illustrates how uh, we actually create a learning community within our learning network. Then we'll take this into autonomy as a way of looking at adaptive self-organization. Then also how we become more and more integrated in our environment and something that we could call a digital resident. We now move into the second page and uh, as you can see um, I'm at the moment engaged in finalizing my master thesis with the working title Educators Use of Web Tools to Navigate Distributed Learning Environments. The major interest here is where are we heading regarding tools and social networks they are becoming more and more used within education. My own personal journey has been uh, a lot around digital identity. So let's look at this bottom corner where we have digital identity. You probably all heard about this, we can talk about baby boomers, generation X, generation Y, the cloud generation, and they all try to be descriptions of why we are, what, how we interact with new media. And Stephen Downs, he used the expression that to teach is to model and demonstrate, and to learn is to practice and reflect. There are uh, three different stages or, or arenas where digital identity are materialized. And um, one is uh, the personal learning environment where you do your reflection and experience from different practice. You, you try basically to make sense of new knowledge and uh, new ideas and thoughts that are coming up in your own mind. When you enter a new knowledge area and you, you got to a stage where reflection and practice has come to a level where you actually can model and demonstrate, that is when you, instead of just internally explaining it and trying to formulate it, you're actually expressing it and showing examples and demonstrating it for other people in the community. Once you do that successfully, in my case at least, it came to a certain confidence where I could feel like I can now actually formulate this in some sort of representation. That is what we could call we feed forward. When that one is then used and you get feedback, you are back in the same circle again. Then you look at how can I again develop clear models and how can this be illustrated in a clear representation. So uh, back to the idea of using tools. As you can see in the opening of my master thesis, I'm writing a, a major change in education has been the emergence of a distributed knowledge and the use of internet in teaching practices. Uh, Humans have throughout history used tools to increase our understanding of the world. Social networks have always been part of our learning but can be amplified by the tools we have available. And this is what I think is very well illustrated with the networked teacher. Uh, this image was created by Alec Kors. Basically, the end thing is that without the right tool, uh, many tasks are difficult or impossible. One tool is not suited for all purposes, but a useful tool can inspire people to use 
it in a different ways and that the tools for a more specific job will constantly be developed. And this quote is basically illustrating that the tools we have at this moment will probably develop, change and adapt to the use. The person in the middle is connected to several tools, but what is the difference here is that we actually use these tools to connect to people around us in a network. So if we now from Alex's model of the network teachers move to the side and look at this pyramid. I first came across this by looking at Jeff Utrecht from Holland. Uh, he um, had made this illustration and uh, basically we have print literacy, reading and writing. But there are still many educators developing their digital literacy and trying to implement information and communication technologies in the teaching method. The interesting part is that we, we now are moving to a stage where we are looking at a network literacy where it's not only to use the tools, it's actually more what are the tools networking with or how does they actually connect. So network literacy is about understanding connections. We can then look at this model created by Terry Anderson or it's a way of illustrating his three generations of distance education pedagogy. He's saying if we move to a learning perspective based on forming networks and collaboration instead of managing information, we will reinvent the role of education. Conversation or instruction, influence or control, and abundance or scarcity are some of the challenges that comes with this model. Terry Anderson describes the three generations of distance education pedagogy and the three aspects about the role of the educator is if we start from the bottom we have a teacher teaching the student and the content is coming through transfer based on uh, remembering and understanding of knowledge when we get to the constructivist model where we actually analyze and apply knowledge we more have uh, more time spending when student interact with other students uh, this is called group learning and we normally introduce a new subject area and then they do investigation and they do project based learning inquiry based learning and it's about constructing knowledge and now you can see how uh, this pyramid uh, which is still missing the top because we don't know where we're heading is where we get to this connectivist learning and we actually are putting the students into an authentic environment and creating a network where they basically will find connections and through these connections they will create knowledge and that is where we get to next because that is what George Siemens and Stephen Down created as connectivists. One way of call saying it is knowing where to find the information is more important than the content Knowledge is complex and needs to be navigated. Active engagement, not passive observation. Basically what I'm trying to say here is that we use these different models and we have different ways of seeing knowledge being created. So let's start with the social constructivism. In social constructivism you relate parts of the subject matter to each other and comprehend the world by reinterpreting knowledge. No consensus around creating shared meaning. Uh, the next one could be activity theory. To create knowledge, we search for reusable components and knowledge is mediated through participation with tools and artifacts. So this is also on the same wavelengths, but in connectivist, there's no obligations of community or practice with a core activity. Uh, we also have actor network theory. In this case we have identities and qualities that are negotiated and learning is to associate with other actors in a changeable network. In the end, do we really need this to conform to different elements together in a mutual agreement? Basically, do, we, do, do everyone has to have the same idea of knowledge? 
So uh, finally, if we try to formulate the same structure in the connectivism pedagogy, we will have the property of two entities resonates and knowledge is distributed across a network of connections. And uh, here we are actually creating and evaluating knowledge that we find out in the world. So we have moved from understanding and remembering to actually evaluating and creating knowledge. And uh, this has been formulated by George Siemens and Stephen Downs as a pedagogic theory called connectivism, where information is a node and understanding is an emergent property of a network. And knowledge consists of the connections between entities in a network and learning consists of developing and traversing these networks. This new type of knowledge or, or new approach to knowledge is then what we can say is network learning. And uh, one feature of network learning is that it's distributed. So Mark Cantor has illustrated this type of distributed knowledge in a network with persons that are connected with each other, but they also have their space on internet in what we call the personal learning environment. So we're learning online in a live session, but we also learn offline when we are analyzing, going through materials and exchanging thoughts uh, in an asynchronous way. So uh, to grow or develop and navigate and traverse connections, uh, Stephen Downs suggests four principles of effective design for network learning. First one is autonomy. It's when each entity in a network governs itself. We'll get back to that later on. Uh, diversity, entities in a network can have distinct, unique states. So this is what we call a property. Openness, membership in a network is fluid and the networks receive external input. Interactivity, knowledge in the network is derived from a process of interactivity rather than through a process of propagating the properties of one entity to the next one. So basically here is what we call weak ties, that there is not 100% transfer, which means that they not always get the response. If you go the philosophical, I got very interested in what Stephen Downs is saying that we actually are entering something that is post-linguistic and sub-symbolic. It's like we read between the lines and we actually are now developing tacit knowledge. And if you master a field of knowledge, it's like a performance. So we can distinguish that there is competence, but we cannot always describe it. So 